So, in this video, which will be quite short, I explain how I get uh, things uh, centred in a, a chuck mounted on the rotary table, so I get uh, the minimum run out on the object clamped in the chuck. Now, getting the first step is to try and get the chuck uh, centred on the table, and that's relatively easy. There's several different ways, but what I tend to do, I've got a, 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 a test bar here, parallel test bar, and uh, it's got a, 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 morse, a three morse tape of mail on the end. So if you stick that down through the hole in the chuck into the socket in the bottom of the in the rotary table and then do the chuck up on the bar, you get pretty close. There's other ways, but that's that's a pretty easy way to do it. So and as you'll see, after doing that, I'm where I started now. Let's come around to there. So anyway, you could see that there's uh, very little run out on the, uh, the chuck as it rotates on the table. But run out on an object clamped in the chuck is a different story, as you'll see. I think it's fair to say that any, any three-jaw self-centering chuck, other than the grip true ones, which uh, can be uh, adjusted to give you exactly what you want, are going to have some some run out. So in this case, hopefully you better see that. So the chuck runs true, but there's the run out in the truck in the chuck coming into play. It's not bad. It's four point oh four or something. Point oh five. Maybe 0.06. You know, it's within range for a normal um, cheap chuck. So the question though is now uh, how to move the, um, the chuck around on the rotary table to get rid of that. What I've tried to do in the past is loosen the screws off a bit and gently tap it with a mallet. And yes, you can get there doing that, but it's extremely tedious and slow and you keep overshooting. So I thought I'd come up with a different way of doing it. So to make it easier to move the uh, chuck under some sort of control, I've made up three jacking screws, one for each, uh, each slot that's got a, a clamp bolt in it. So there's a T-nut, uh, sized to fit in the gap at the end of the slot, uh, a bracket with a couple of, uh, well it's like an upside down T-nut locating feature. and. Uh, uh, a forcing screw, fine thread with um, a brass insert so it doesn't mark up the side of the chuck. And um, loosen that screw off a bit. Right, we just nip that up. And I think you can see how that's supposed to work. So I'll just put the other two on. Right, so I have the three jack screws installed now. So let's see what we have to do to get this thing to run true. Find out first up where we get the maximum deflection this way. Somewhere around there. Which means the thing's got to go that way a bit. So we'll back this off a touch. And do these screws up a little bit. and uh, see what difference that made. Looking like I got pretty lucky on the first go there. Alright, so I think that might be a high. So I think we need to push this guy in a little bit. Let's try that. Now the high has swung around here now. So I'll just tighten this up slightly. And maybe not that one. We'll keep going. Alright. I think you can see that very quickly we've managed to eliminate the run out in the chuck. Anyway, I think you got the picture. Um, that's pretty darn close now. 
and it was a little easier. In fact, I don't think I would have been able to achieve that by tapping the chuck with a mallet.